So yeah, this would be a good place to start. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions, part nine. What is our thing? In today's episode, we entered by sharing the fact that we shared some of our 3D work with folks and it kind of seemed like they didn't get it. You know, like what is vertical stereo? Um, which is okay because the question is, are we, to, are we to be put off by people not getting us? And, and the short answer is, it depends. If we know exactly what we're trying to do, then we, and we really do want to get it across, then we can back up and figure out another way to explain it. On the other hand, if we're working stuff out as we go along, we may not want to take time to do that because, you know, good, that was good to know. They don't get it. Do we get it? So, um, so we said, we listened to some of our previous work and sometimes it seems like when we're working on new things, it's a painful climbing to a new resolution. But now having spent this stream, we thought maybe awkward is as good a word as painful. In other words, we're gawky and stumbling and banging into things. Nevertheless, we're moving forward. And that is what we keep doing. Just keep diving in, getting perspective. The, the more you keep trying things, moving and moving a bit here, moving a bit there, and seeing what you're trying to get at from different angles, um, the better off we are. That's how we feel anyway. So what we did is we were listened to some of our previous work from this year. And then the main thing we did was we got those extended chords added to all of our scores. And then um, we even double checked the one we used in the last series, not only the reference sheets, but the reference scores. And we figured out a new way to sort full tonality chords and we updated our scales checklist. And here is the checklist. So the scales that are in yellow are the scales that we have picked to work with in this series. These are their DNA, the chord, the intervals. And after going through the whole thing, adding extended chords and sorting them, uh, this scale has 20 total chords, 50, 56 total chords, 18 total chords, and 50 total chords. And the one we worked with last time had 56. So, and there's an interesting curiosity that two of them have 56. Some of them have shared minor major chords and some of them don't. Some of them have a fair number of minor major chords and some of them have fewer. And some of them have quite a lot of full tonality chords and some of them don't. So what we're going to do is play brief extracts from each of the four scales that we're working with. We're going to play just the tonality chords because we took the time and trouble to sort these into what we call zigzag spelling order. And what we mean by zigzag spelling order is whenever, whenever we have um, full tonality chords like down here, you know, up here we have minor chords across the top. Major chords across the bottom, and the chords that are minor major across the middle. And spelling order means with their tonics, uh, where can we see that? If it's a tonic chord, you start with a C and then the D, E, F, G, A flat, A, B flat, like that. And then you, f you flop over to the dom dominance and you start the C, D, E, F, G over again. Anyway, it turned out in tonality chords, there's no minor major, but there's often a lot of them. So we start, we just go this way. First chord here, next chord here, third chord here, fourth chord here, and that's what we call zigzag order. And it really matters down here because you see we have so freaking many. If we try to put them all the way across the spreadsheet, it would just go on forever. So we just went this way, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So that's what we mean by zigzag order. So that said, let us play only 
the tonality chords in zigzag spelling order. First for the 3663, those are tonics, ambivalence, and that is for this scale here. Now, the 2332 two, two scale sounds very different. It sounds like this. And here are its tonic chords in zigzag order. And then it's got subdominant, dominant, and ambivalent. Now, the 4554 five, four scale sounds like this. And it has, here are its tonic, full. That's it. It's only got two. It does have four ambivalent. Okay, the fourth scale is the 2442, four, two, and it sounds like this. Different again, and here are its, uh, let's pick a different one. Let's pick its, it has a bunch of subdominants. We'll play its subdominants in spelling order, which are supposed to lead into the tonic. So these are the four scales that we've picked to work with, and the bottom line is that we've gone and put all the extended chords, all the chords we can think of in all combinations of three notes together, uh, including whether the notes are roots or urge notes, are there minor modes, major modes, are they no function and all that. And when we figure that all out, these are how many total chords we get. So this is our palette. This is our palette to work with, to start dabbing our brush in and slapping it on a canvas. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are to, well, part of us really says, well, look at this. There's only three other scales left that you haven't done this for. Why don't you just, you know, bite the bullet and fill it in? See, you see those three white areas right there? Okay, we might do that. Um, we're also continuing to explore uh, new ideas and new sources for ideas for composing in multiple dimensions. And uh, a nuts and bolts one would be to go back to our clickable chain that you saw on the last stream. And it's a bit soft when you try to listen to it in the 3D platform. So maybe maybe we just need to make the sounds louder and then upload them and then they will be louder up there because we turned the volume up in the 3D world, but it didn't get any louder. And that does lead to another thing we think we need to do. What we may be asking ourselves is to further articulate the multiple dimensions theme. What do we mean by that? So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do come back. Makes a difference you're being here. Shout out to Miss Cleo as always. And as always, take care and keep on streaming.